It's not your typical Christmas presentation. This is like one of the best uh, traditions that Sanford has. The whole process of creating work is exciting. Oh, the taste of the holidays, turkey, ham, dressing, all served up by Sanford President Andy Westmoreland and Chef Chris Vizina. Needless to say, one of the best meals in the calf all year. And this is one of the most special moments on campus, the lighting of the way. Sanford's Christmas tree is lit and it's ready to go. Better yet, we start the Christmas season with the reading of the Christmas story. She wrapped them in cloths and placed them in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. So after all that, are you in the Christmas spirit yet? Merry Christmas! Merry Christmas! This is like one of the best uh, traditions that Sanford has just because it does allow all the different um, organizations to come together and celebrate something that we all have in common. I couldn't have said it any better myself. And welcome to the Sanford Chronicle, everybody. I'm Brad Radici. And yes, the Christmas lights are on and the countdown is on to the big day, Christmas Day. And that means one of Sanford's storied traditions is back. It's hanging of the green. This marks the 32nd year the Sanford community has come together for Christmas scripture, song, and worship. The Advent wreath is lit. Other traditions recognized as we celebrate the birth of Christ. It's so special because um, as a Christian college, we can come together and um, celebrate the birth of our Savior. And it's awesome because like the whole community comes together and we get here to celebrate and decorate for Christmas. And it's such a special time to see everything all lit up and excited for Christmas. And it's a good time to celebrate right before finals. Also, 15 seniors who show scholarship, leadership, and spiritual commitment are honored and participate in the ceremony. This is one of my favorite traditions at Sanford, so it truly is an honor uh, to be able to be a part of it. It's not the hanging of the green or, you know, going and necessarily just listening to the Christmas story, but it's a community that you have, and you really get to be an integral part of that. So what was it like 2,000 years ago when Jesus was born and the star of Bethlehem lit the sky? Well, here at the Christenberry Planetarium, it'll show you. In an hour-long show, questions are addressed that historians and scientists have long pondered about the star that lit the sky that night. Did it really exist? Well, this is a it's, a, it's a, it's not your typical Christmas presentation. By presenting some information that is, uh, some of it's very ancient and some of it's very modern. And uh, we, all, we tie all that together and show how that some of the competing theories about the star of Bethlehem how they couldn't possibly be true, but I think I have actually put together something that makes sense, where the, uh, the motions of the heavens and the scientific discoveries and the ancient record all come together to verify that there actually was a star of Bethlehem and where it was in the sky. The show takes place at 7 p.m. from December 10th through the 14th. For more information, head to Sanford.edu. Well, from Bethlehem to Vatican City, Beeson Divinity School Dean Dr. Timothy George was on hand to visit with Pope Benedict XVI at the 13th Ordinary General Assembly of the Synod of Bishops. We were invited to participate in the whole work of the Synod and actually to make a, an address to the Synod. So it was a great experience. I made lots of friends around the world and also learned an enormous amount about the Catholic Church, about decision making at that level of church governance. Now back here on campus in beautiful Hodges Chapel, Beeson Divinity School welcomed Dr. Karen Peterson Finch for their 24th annual Heritage Reformation Lectures. And Dr. Finch, who's a Whitworth University theology professor, talked about John Calvin and argued against his characterization of being the theologian of no. And Samford was host to Christoph Sander, the new Southeast Region Consul General of Germany. He spoke of Germany's business involvement in the Southeast and said his country and the U.S. have much in common and can learn from one another. Now, if you've ever read The Hobbit or The Lord of the Rings, well, you're reading Tolkien. 
and Sanford's library had a special exhibit of his works, first editions in hardcover, paperback, and famed movie posters. And this exhibit pays respect to Tolkien, who died nearly 40 years ago. In these articles, they belong to Dr. Hal Poe and his daughter, Rebecca, who have written and studied all of Tolkien's works. When I was in high school, about ninth grade, my dad started giving, who was also a fan, started giving me uh, first and rare editions um, to put on my bookshelf. Some of the books I have are um, the bootleg pirated editions of the paperbacks that were brought out. And while Middle Earth is pretty creative, so are the artworks right here in Sanford's art gallery. Check these out. Yeah, these are the works of Michael Auerbach. He's a nationally acclaimed sculptor. His work was on display here for most of the month of November, including this piece, Administrative Trial and Error. And there's no mistake that Sanford's Wright Center hosts some of the best talents in the world. The Eisenhower Dance Ensemble was in town. Better yet, these dancers, some of the best on the planet, they took time to work with Sanford students. Oftentimes we'll come in in advance of an event and we'll try to work with community, either community dancers, local dance studios, or university dancers. They offered us a workshop this whole week and whoever comes to the workshop gets to perform with them on Friday night. The whole process of creating work is exciting, whether you're working with professional dancers or you're working with younger dancers. To me, um, it's sort of the joy of movement and, and uh, sharing that with others. It's always uh, a blessing, I think. Sanford's Opera Department, along with the School of the Arts, performs Hansel and Gretel, the old fairy tale. The question is, do they escape the mean old scary witch? Now don't worry, no spoilers here. Now one thing that can be scary is college tuition, but I can tell you that Sanford is one of the best buys in the country. And we're a school on the rise. Kiplinger's Personal Finance Magazine rates the 100 best values in private colleges, and Sanford comes in at number 63 two spots better than last year. Plus, we're the only Alabama private institution to rank. And the rankings take into account tuition and financial aid. And since this is the season of thanks, these students are offering them to those who have donated to Sanford, making their experience here what it is today. And before we go, I wanted to give you a little update on some of the construction projects we have going on here at campus. You've likely heard about the new West Village. You can see the first building, which is slated to open in January. It's coming together nicely. The interior is being worked on. And the building that was behind me is the new Haywood Baseball Softball Fieldhouse. The superstructure is up, and the project is underway. And as we wind down, I want you to remember Samford.edu. Go there for all the latest Samford news. Also check us out on Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. Well, for the next Chronicle, we're cooking with Chris Vizina. We're doing some holiday recipes, and we'll also wrap up fall commencement. So till next time, I'm Brad Radisi, and you're watching the Sanford Chronicle.